Alt Shift Left Click will join any geometry node directly to the group output. Alt Shift Left Click. Welcome to the final video of 2021. We're making sure that we are going into the new year with a keen understanding of how to quickly navigate the nodes as we use them. Being able to navigate and understand the shortcuts for doing stuff, it's going to make things a lot quicker for you when working. And the faster you can get an idea from your head into Blender, the more fun you're going to have playing with Blender, playing with nodes, and less time you're going to spend frustrated trying to plug nodes together. We're going to be making sure that we understand really the fundamental shortcuts. I'm going to be showing you a few more than is probably necessary, but these are just the ones that I use. First things first, we're going to be enabling the default add-on node wrangler and on top of that i'm also going to recommend that you have a look at the noodler add-on this is a new add-on by bd3d it just adds a whole load of really useful functionality being able to manipulate stuff frames long distance connections coloring stuff beveling noodles lots of stuff like that a lot of fun to work with it's just going to make your life easier especially if you do these larger node trees so noodler i recommend just to make sure that everybody is in the same starting point let's go up to edit preferences and then in our blender preferences window we can go down to add-ons and we can just search for node wrangler so i have got my node wrangler enabled here if you would like a comprehensive list of shortcuts you can just expand this hotkeys list and you can find loads of them in here don't worry about learning them all there's way more than you'll ever really use it is there if you want the reference alternatively if you want all of your node key map you can find that under your key map in here. Go down to the node editor, node editor global, and now you'll be able to find all of the operators. All right, starting at the start, I've added a new node tree here, and I've got my two nodes. If I want to add a new node, you can of course go up to the add menu up here, but we're going to be using shift A to bring up our add menu. Shift A for the add menu. If, like me, you quite like things to be organized, then you can see that I like to snap to a grid. And the shortcut is shift tab, or you can find the magnet shortcut, the magnet button up in this top right hand corner for snapping. Shortcut, shift tab. You may notice that my noodles are straight. And if you too would like to have straight noodles, the place where you can set this is in the edit, preferences, themes, and then under node editor, if we come down to the bottom here, we can find noodle curving. You can also find grid levels. So by default, I think you'll have a few levels of grid and you'll have a little bit of noodle curving. I am personally not a fan of either, so I like to have mine set both to zero, and that's just gonna give me a nice clean canvas to work on with nice straight lines. We've done our snapping, we've done our add menu. Next one we're gonna have a look at is duplicating. So if you want to duplicate a node, the way to do it is with Shift D. Shift D will duplicate a node, and the great thing about this is it will duplicate it with whatever settings you have already. If I set my crease to one, and my levels to two, if I duplicate this node, it will be identical to that node. Now, if I have a value node plugged in here into my crease, and let's say that I want to duplicate this, but then I have to join it up just the same. So there's a faster way to do this. Rather than pressing Shift D to duplicate, we can do Control Shift D to duplicate with the inputs intact. So Control Shift D will give us that. Now, sometimes you may wish to do an operation and then repeat it. This is perhaps more common with shaders where you might want to take an image texture, duplicate it and make sure it's got all of its connections and then just repeat that for all of your other images. Nice, easy way to do this. Duplicate it however you want, Control Shift D in this case, and then press Shift R to repeat that last operation. There we go. And now we can see that we have all of these connected as desired. Now, deleting nodes. We've added them. Let's delete them. So if I were to grab another one, stick it in front here. If I would like to delete this node, what I can do is I can press X. X for delete, nice and convenient. And then I can just join this back up like so. Now, if I don't want to have to join that up every time, that's going to get really annoying. I can just press Control X. This will dissolve a node. So there we go. We keep our noodles intact. Control X. And equally, what happens if you have nodes which are in your node tree, but they're not being used for anything? This might happen if you've built quite a complex system and you've had multiple sort of attempts, branching ideas along the way that have no longer been used. If I just, you know, randomly duplicate a bunch of stuff here, we can see that only one line is actually going to make it to the group output. 
If I press Alt X, we're going to get this little pop up that says, would you like to delete unused nodes? Alt X, we can just select that. And now we can see everything that does not connect directly to our processing branch gets deleted. So everything which is a separate branch or a loose node will be deleted. There's a couple of things. By default, if I add in a node in between, it's going to make space. And that's very useful with a small node setup like this. However, it stops being so useful when you have lots of nodes and they're very well organized. For example, if I have something like this, and maybe I've got some math nodes underneath, and these are all joined together, and I don't know, something like that, right? And now if I go and plug something in, let's join these ones up as well. So it's all quite compact and neat. And that, let's say I wanted to suddenly add something in here. Well, this is all right because it's pushing this back. What happens if I add another one of these up here? Well, now suddenly it's pushing all sorts of stuff out of the way. You can turn off auto offset under view, auto offset. So now if I duplicate this, you can see nothing happens, but it is still connected. I know a lot of people ask me how I do this, especially when I'm working on a big complex node tree. And it's like, ah, finally, there's a way to not make it auto offset. I think by default, the behavior should be to auto offset. I am generally very glad that it's making more space for me automatically. But yeah, sometimes, especially when stuff starts getting complex, just you just want to turn it off. So view, turn off auto offset, just if you want to when stuff gets complex. All right, so we've managed to delete stuff, Alt X. You can see we lose that node at the end there. And if I want to dissolve things, I can press Control X to dissolve. Let me dissolve a few more of these. There we go. We're back to where we started. Now, if we have a node which is on our connection, but we do not wish to delete it, for example, I have a dual mesh here, and maybe rather than pressing Control X and deleting it, perhaps I just want to remove it and put it somewhere else. Maybe I have a different branch that I want to put it onto. The way that we can extract a node from a noodle is by holding Alt, just hold Alt and then drag it. Now, if I have nodes that I want to keep together, perhaps they are sharing data, there's kind of two ways that I want to do this. You can either frame or you can group. And I know that people have different ways of doing this, different preferences. If I were to group these, if I do this, I can select them. I'm just dragging there to get a box selection. Control G to give me a group. Now we can see that I've only got these nodes. If I press tab, I can go in and out of a selected node group. I can name this my group. And then you can see that this group will be in our groups menu down there. There we go. Now with a group, you can do some fun things like plugging in to different options here. It's very useful to be able to set up groups, but sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you still want to access all of this data, but you want things to be together. To ungroup my group here, I'm going to press Control Alt G. So it was Control G to put it into a group, Tab to go in and out, and then Control Alt G to ungroup. And rather than grouping, I'm going to press Control J to frame it. Now we can see that all of these are together within one frame. I can color this frame by pressing N, and then in the Node tab, I can tick on the color and I can give it a color. If you would like to have some preset colors, which I have here, what you can do is you can set up a color like perhaps white and I can go into my presets, give this new preset a name, and then I can click the little plus over here. Now we have white in our list. So every time I add something, I can now set it to whichever color I want from my presets. These are custom presets and they get shared between your own files. They're saved in your user data. Now, if I turn off that color, that has got rid of that color. Now we're all good. All right. So frames are useful to you know see what stuff is, but what if you want to tell somebody what it is? You're going to open this file in six months and you're not going to know what's going on. If I select my frame here, there's two ways of naming something. I can press N, go up to my label, and I can call this one, there we go, label, like that, whatever. Or what I can do is with it selected, I can press F2 and this is going to bring up my node label options. So I can call this one my frame. Now it doesn't just work on frames. It also works on nodes and in fact reroutes as well. So I can click on my value node here and I can rename this one to be crease because that's what we're plugging into there. Simply renaming things will save you a lot of time in the long run, understanding what your node tree is, where it's going. You'll know if you've seen me making these really big node trees that we often have a lot of frames all named and color coded and it just really helps you navigate helps you be a bit more visual in what's going on 
Now, a quick little bonus tip here actually is if I have a frame, perhaps I have multiples of these and I've got them all in their own one like this. There we go. Give these both just a little splash of color. There we go. Awesome. So we have a frame inside frames. If I want to just make one of these frames move or if I've got one selected and I want to really select all of them, if I have this collected, I can press open square bracket and that is going to select the parent. Whereas if I go close square bracket, for example, if I select this mesh and then I close square bracket, we have now selected the nodes within. All right, nice and easy. If you want to remove something from a frame, you can press Alt P, which is going to essentially unparent it from that frame. So we can select them, Alt P, and now these are separate from their frame. I can delete the frames just like that. All right. Now, how are we going to delete this random unused branch? We're going to press Alt X to delete unused nodes. Now we understand how to properly organize our node trees with frames and labels. What's the next one? Well, the next one is going to be reroutes. And this is very useful. So if I have two branches coming off something, rather than having these all going behind other nodes, things like this, what you might want to do is to reroute your noodles. So to reroute a noodle, you just press shift, hold right click, and we're going to get this line. So you can see as I dragged over that, these got joined up. And in fact, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to pull these out sideways here. And now you can see that we're basically navigating around our other nodes in the scene. And this is really useful because it means that we're able to, you know, control exactly where our noodles go and maintain the visibility that we're after. Also allows us to group noodles as we've done here. So that was shift, right click and drag to get that reroute. You'll notice I'm pressing G instead of clicking on it to move it, because when I click on it to move it, I get another connection. So G is what you want to do to move a reroute. If I want to cut a noodle, what I can do is I can press Control right click and drag. So it was shift right click and drag to create a reroute and control right click and drag to cut a noodle. There is a tool for this as well. If you press T, go to the scissors, then you just have this tool constantly. It's a little bit easier to press Control right click and drag whenever you need it. Now, what if I want to join this up really easily rather than clicking on this noodle, joining it over there, maybe I want to do this a little bit quicker. So a nice easy way to do this is with Alt right click drag. See that I now have this red connection and that's doing that. So Control and Alt and Shift are your modifiers for the right click drag. Let me do that again. So I can Control right click to cut it, Alt right click, join it. And you can see how inaccurate I can be with these as well. If I do something like this, I'm nowhere near those nodes, but that connection is still going to be made between them. Now, what happens if you have a node which is a very long way away? To do long distance connections, there's a couple of ways I'm going to show you. Let me just use, just to demonstrate this, a geometry transform, just because it has a few input sockets. And I'm going to move it over here. And then just on the left hand side, I'm going to use maybe an object info node. All right, so I'm kind of arbitrarily separating these, but just so that you can see what's going on here. Now, if I just do a Alt right click drag, then we can get that connection to go across like that. Now, you can see that this is not going into the top or the bottom socket. By default, if I was to add, for example, a just a vector and join this up, it's going to go into the top socket. The reason that this hasn't with our object info node is because rotation is the same name over here. So what it's doing is it's finding the best possible match it can with that lazy connection. Very useful, but sometimes we want some more control. Rather than Alt, right click and drag, if I do Shift, Alt, right click and drag, now I get this blue connection. So if I join this up like this, we can see where are we coming from? Let's go from scale into translation. There's no real reason for me to do that, but it allows you to see how this is working. Let's do that again. Alt, Shift, right click and drag. Let's go from geometry into geometry this time. Now we're getting that other connection. So we're able to get a much faster way of connecting while still maintaining the accuracy that we're going for. It's much easier than coming in here, finding our location socket and dragging it all the way over, hoping that we end up in the right place and then joining that up. Now there is another option if you are using the Noodler add-on. See, I have one of these selected. What I can do is I can press V and I can scroll to see which socket I'm going to come from. So I'm just scrolling through those sockets there. So that was V with it selected. I can now scroll. Let's go down to our green geometry socket. 
I can come over to my other one and I can press shift and now I can get this and you can see because we're sort of connecting it temporarily you can see it's going red to show us there's an error when we're connecting that geometry to a vector so that's a very useful little debug I can see I want to go from this one to this one confirm now there's another reason I really like to use the noodler one for long distances is because I don't need to be able to see necessarily so let's say I'm going from the location which is going to be what happens when I automatically select this and when you're using things like vector math nodes there's only one output all right so let's go from our vector math here got it selected I can now come into my transform node I can press V shift to join it and now I can select that with my scroll wheel super simple so let's join our vector math up into our scale just click to confirm that and that's perfect so this is why I really like to use the uh, the noodler add-on long distance connections so much easier on to the next one we have got a couple more shortcuts for joining things so rather than joining things in a sort of linear way right like this what if we want to join stuff in parallel so if i do Control shift right click now we can get a join geometry in fact if i had multiple vector math nodes with a vector output Control shift right click is going to be a vector math output and if i add math nodes you can see where this is going we're going to get that math node output so Control shift right click and drag it's going to allow you to get these kinds of connections with some math operations it doesn't really matter which order they're in but sometimes it does so i'm going to change this to a subtract and then i'm going to flip my inputs and let's just see how quickly i can do this i'm going to go like that oh and there we go we're done <laughs> so what did I do there I open this and then very quickly I pressed s because I know that the s is our underlined letter right so we can do that again go s and then alt s alt s will switch sockets and if I select the underlined letter it will basically send me to whichever function that is so I can press a for add m for multiply n for minimum x for maximum t for less than g for greater than f for floor but a couple others at the bottom there b for absolute that's quite common yeah basically have a look at what your underlined letter is if you're using something a lot for example multiply subtract add divide these ones are going to be especially because they're so close to your fingers already right you've already got your hand there and then alt s is going to allow you to switch input sockets now what happens if you actually didn't mean to add a math node what if you want to switch this node out well you can press shift s remember shift a was your add menu shift s is your switch menu so let's switch this out for maybe a uh, compare node and now you can see that we've switched that node for this other type there's a couple other things that we want to do here so for example let's say that you have different kinds of math node and in fact this i have a compare node this is a good opportunity to show this i had a node tree a few days ago where i needed to change a whole bunch of compare nodes that were set up incorrectly they were all set to equals and i wanted them to all be set to not equals okay and i had a lot of nodes and they were all over the node tree i didn't really want to just find each one go in so it's not equals there's a real fast way for us to do this right if I select all of the nodes that I want to change and I press and hold alt so hold alt I can then go into one of them and I can set this now to not equals you can now see that all of these have been changed this works for any mode and in fact it works on any node as well so if I have math nodes connected you can maybe set these both to divide instead or subtract or multiply so that's a real quick little tip for doing that holding alt will allow you to change data across multiple nodes at the same time you can see i'm changing that second b socket even though i'm only dragging on one of them just because i'm holding alt this kind of works all over blender if for example you want to set auto smooth on 20 different objects select all those objects go to your auto smoothing option press and hold alt and then tick it and it's going to go blue while you tick it and that's just saying this is a multi-object operation so there we go alt is your friend Control c Control v why is this interesting why am i showing you how to copy and paste data surely you already know this right well there's two ways that i want to show you how to do this all right so first of all you do not have to select things you don't have to click to copy you can just hover as soon as your mouse is over something and it is highlighted Control c Control v 
There we go, no clicking required. It also works with colors. So if I have a color input, let's add a couple of these, make one of them red. If I go control C and then control V, you can see that's worked perfectly. You can also, maybe one of these is blue. If I drag color, color you can drag. So that's nice, easy way of doing that as well. For doing vectors, you don't want to go control C, control V three times over. However, what you can do is you can do control alt C and then control alt V. And now you can see that's taken the whole vector. It also works in multiple different data types. I think this is maybe new for 3.1. I was having difficulty with it before when I first tried it, but it does seem to now work across multiple different types of data, whether that is angles or distance or just a straight vector. Now, there is another thing I want to show you, and that is how to copy kind of arbitrary data. In fact, let me change one of these to be called, very unoriginally, name. If I select both of these nodes and I press Shift C, I'm going to get a copy to selected option here. So I can select my copy settings from active. And now you can see that all of my sockets have been replaced and also the title has been replaced. So lots of things go across or you can even add a node in here. If I just select my set material node and I press shift C on here, copy label from linked nodes label. Now you can see that because this was the connection, this one is now also called name. So shift C is your copy to selected node. There we go. Control C, control V is for straight copy and paste. Control Alt C, control Alt V will copy and paste entire vectors. And your shift C will give you that menu. Last one to show you here is quick favorites. Q is going to give you your list of quick favorites. You can see I've already got a few in mind. These are just things I use all the time. If you add anything from your menus, example, I can come in here. Maybe I use my set position node a lot, uh, which I do actually, I can find this. I can right click on it, add to quick favorites. And now on my Q menu, I have set position in here. Cool thing about this menu is it can also take entire menus. So for example, if I wanted to add my toolkit curves menu, for example, I can add this to my quick favorites Q. And now my curves menu is in here like so awesome, very useful. Hopefully this has been useful. Check down the link in the description. There's going to be a link to a PDF containing all of these shortcuts for you, or I will also just list them in the description. I feel like that's maybe useful for more people as well. I recommend learning shortcuts because Blender is very fast when you know shortcuts and it's a little bit difficult when you don't know shortcuts. You have to do everything with your mouse and that's a little bit fiddly, especially with nodes and making these connections. Hopefully this has helped. Hopefully you're going to have a wonderful 2022 and I'll see you in the new year.